When we talk about heat with gases and gases that are go going to stay gases, we don't typically use the mass and, mul and specific heat in terms of joules per kilogram Kelvin. With gases, as you already know, we often talk about the number of moles. So we can write heat in terms of number of moles, but it turns out we only have two main equations for heat. C sub V is called the molar specific heat at constant volume. It has units of joules per mole Kelvin instead of joules per kilogram Kelvin. C sub P is the molar specific heat at constant pressure. It also has the same units of joules per mole Kelvin. This allows us, if you remember, lowercase n is the number of moles. And that way we can talk about heat in terms of our gases in terms of the number of moles instead of number of molecules. Delta T is still the final temperature minus the initial temperature, the difference. Now, C, we, well, I guess I should just make sure it's obvious. We use this top equation for any type of constant volume process. So that's also called isochoric you will see this equation listed along the line of the table in chapter 19 that is for constant volume. This second one we use only for the isobaric processes, also listed as constant pressure. Now CV and CP are constant depending upon the type of gases that we are working with. So sudden jump in picture, I went and copied out of the test notes. This is about a third to half of the way down on the page, uh, chapter 19 in the test notes. Our constants, CP and CV, so CP, molar specific heat at constant pressure, CV, molar specific heat at constant volume, they're related in terms of R, meaning the gas constant. So remember R is 8.31, the rounded number that our author is using, joules per mole Kelvin. So CP is always a value of R higher than CV. Now these values are constant depending upon the type of gas. If the gas is monatomic, meaning single atoms, I mentioned before this is the right-hand column on the periodic table. If it's monatomic gas, this top row, 3 halves R for CV, 5 halves R for CP. When I do example problems, I'll be using the 3 halves R and the 5 halves R as opposed to the numbers in decimals, which those should work okay. They're rounded, of course, as well, but they should work okay fine. If we have a diatomic gas, if you remember, diatomic gases have two atoms bound together, so oxygen, O2, nitrogen, hydrogen, Air is the other one we were mentioning. When there's two atoms bound together, the CV value is bigger. It's 5 halves R. CP ends up being 7 halves R for a diatomic gas. 
So CV is one of these two values. The top value is monatomic. The bottom value is for diatomic gases. Similarly, CP is one of these two values. The top value for monatomic, the bottom value for diatomic gases. If we do not happen to know whether we have a monic monatomic or diatomic gas, we cannot use these equations because we don't have a value for CB or CP to plug in. But we're going to be talking about conservation of energy and how heat is related to work and the internal energy of the gas. So there will be other ways to approach a problem if we're asked for heat, but we do not know whether the gas is monatomic or diatomic. So I wanted to go through the equations for heat first, and this next video we get into will go into conservation of energy for gases.